Now, are you ready to learn how we can take limits and use them for, I've already kind of shown you a basic idea of how to do this, how to find this, the slope of a curve at a point. Would you like to learn how to do it for real, using limits? Are you sure? <laughs> the answer is yes, otherwise you get to leave the class because this is where calculus is going now. So, would you like to learn it? Yeah. yeah. Otherwise you're not going to learn calculus. You're going to learn, well, just basic algebra and limits. That's all we've done so far. Ready to learn calculus? You should be jumpy. Yay. You can watch that again on YouTube. Maybe you don't want to. <laughs> Too scared. Well, you've never seen a grown man get excited about calculus before? Come on, people. No. This is a awesome. right, well, first time for everything. 1.5. We're going to talk about tangent lines. We're going to apply them to rates of change. And you're going to see that we can take our idea of limits and turn it into a tangent line, and turn it into a rate of change. It, it's going to be kind of an interesting idea. I, I need you to follow through. This is like a kind of a, not really a proof, it's kind of a semi-proof. We're going to be creating, creating the slope of a curve at a point. I'll, I'll give you a definition for how we say the slope of a curve at a point in the next section. For right now, this is what we're doing though. In the first part of calculus, what we want to do is find the tangent to a curve, right? In order to find the tangent of a curve, you need a slope and a point. The point's going to be given. What we want to be able to do is find the slope of a curve at a point. That's our whole idea. So that's why we'll be talking about tangent lines, and then rates of change follow us directly from that. So we're going to use limits to find the slope of a tangent line to a curve at a point. I'm going to actually write that down so you understand what we're doing. Again, in calculus, a lot of people get halfway through and they forget what it is they're actually doing. They just get caught up in the formulas and doing the math and they're not really focusing on what you're doing. What we're doing, anytime we do this process, we're finding the slope of a curve at a point or the slope of a tangent line to a curve at a point. So we're using limits. to find the slope of a tangent line to a curve at a point. Let me say of the tangent line. Folks, is the first idea, the first problem in calculus. We're going to create it from scratch. So I, I want you to understand where this is coming from. Some of you will have seen part of this formula before in your um, pre-calculus class. Some of you might have seen it in your intermediate algebra class. It's going to look familiar. You're like, Wait a second. That's why we did that. Because at the time, you're like, what the, what the heck is this? Why are we using it? You're going to see why you're using that. So we're going to invent this formula together. That way you see where it's coming from. Would you like to do that? Rather than I just give it, I hated that. I want you to see where it's coming from and understand it. Part of math isn't just doing the math, it's understanding it. That way you have a better understanding later on. So here's our creation. Our idea again, I'm going to draw my same curve I did before. We want to find the slope of this curve at some point, and I'm going to call it P again. What was the other point that I used? Q. Q. Yeah. Now, our idea was that we're going to take Q and have it really, really close to P, right? That was the idea of a limit, really, really close without touching it. That's the idea here. Now, what we're going to do is define this a little bit differently than I did before. You see, we are going to find the slope of the secant line. That's the line that connects those two points. But here's how I'd like to do it. The first thing I want to do is say, okay, P is some point. Let's call it x sub 0. Just my, my point, and it's fixed. It's my actual solid point 
x sub 0. You okay with this so far? Let's see. Is that straighter or less straight? Is that horrible? Is that better? That's better. It looks better. Am I wearing different size shoes or something? <laughs> That's horrible. Okay, x sub zero. And this point, how far is that? How far is that? Well, you can't say, oh, it's seven. Well, there's no actual value, right? We're doing this in general. We don't want to use a different variable. We want it based on this one. But here's how I'm going to do it. I want to say, okay, this, this is x sub zero plus a little teeny bit. Are you with me on that? Plus a little teeny bit. Here's why I want to do the plus a little teeny bit. Uh, because I, I want to introduce the limits to you right now. Because if I do plus a little teeny bit, and I take that little teeny bit and I let it go to zero, think about this for a second. If I let the little teeny bit go to zero, that squeezes point Q all the way over to point P. Do you see it? If I let it approach zero. So here's how we're going to define it. We're not going to call it anything else. We're going to say this is x sub zero plus a little bit. And h is that little bit. Now keep in mind, this is not to scale, okay? What we actually are, are doing is p and q are so are going to become so close to each other that it's no difference. Okay, are you ready to find out this, the height? Let's figure out those two points. How high is point p? Can you tell me that? Yeah, let's assume this function is f. Then that would be f of what now? P. No, not p. Not p. F, 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 f sub 0 because that's our x coordinate for p. So far, so good? How about the, the top point, our q? F of x sub 0 plus h. Sure, we know to find out the height of our function, we just plug in the <coughs> x coordinates. That's how, that's how functions work. So we now have this thing. What we want to do, remember I, our idea is this, uh, never forget the idea. We want to find the slope of the tangent line to a curve at a point. Our point is point P right now. Are, are you with me on that? We want to find the slope of this curve at point P basically is what we're doing. So this is our point. What we're going to do with that though is, well, we need how many points to make a line? How many points to find the slope? You don't have to whisper it. How many? Two. two. Yes, you're all right. Two. Yeah, you need two. Yeah, you need two points. Say so proudly, two points. Yeah. You need two, so we have these two points. But our idea is, let's just take point Q and put it a little bit past point P. You follow me on that? Because ultimately, we're going to take this distance and make it zero. Or make it approach zero, not e equal zero, because then we wouldn't have two points anymore. We're going to make it approach zero. That means get really, really close, and that's the idea of a limit. Do you see why we had to have limits before we could do this idea? Okay. Well, let's go, keep going. Let's find some slope out. Why don't you tell me what is slope? Oh, very good. Okay, rise over run. Give me another way you would do it. Very good, okay. Change in, you have it backwards, but change in, there you go. The change in y over the change in x. Let's find out the change in y and the change in x. Can you tell me, our change in y goes from point P to point Q, how far is that? Or in other words, how could I figure it out? Okay, let me give you some, okay, hang on. This is 10, this is 3. How far is it between them? Very good. How'd you do it? Subtracted 3 minus 10 or 10 minus 3? Hopefully 10 minus 3. The big one minus the small one, right? So how we do this is we go, okay, well, this is not 10 minus 3. It is, do it again for me. Very good. This value, and you could use parentheses if you want, but it's not, it's not necessary here. X sub 0 plus h minus x sub 0 will give you the distance between it. This is all of x sub 0 plus h minus x sub 0 will give you the distance between those two x values. Now, if you're still okay with that, it's kind of a big one. 
Okay, do the math. What's this going to be? H. That's H. That's just H. Well, that should make sense. I mean, how far apart is X sub 0 from X sub 0 plus H? It's just H, right? It's just a little bit. If H was 2, it would be 2 apart. If H is 0 0.00001, well, then they're 0 0.00001 apart. It's just H. Just H. Now, let's go ahead. Let's also find the rise. How much is the rise? F of H. No, not F of H. Not F of H. F of H. If this was 10 and this was 3, the distance between them would be 7. True. Now, how did you do that? Subtract them, so subtract them. You know, I'm going to do this over here so you can see it a little bit better. This is F of X sub 0 plus H, right? This is F of X sub 0. So write that out. Don't do the math in your head, just because you're making a mistake on that right now, some of you. Uh, I want you to write out exactly what it is. So write out exactly what I want you to do. What is it? F of x sub 0 plus h. That's the first value. What, what am I subtracting from that? By a show of hands, how many people feel okay on getting not only the h, but now getting this rise? Feel alright with that? Yes, no? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, wh where did people go wrong and give me f of h? Can you subtract x sub 0 minus x sub 0? The answer is no. You can't do that. That's impossible. You cannot combine those two things. So this, this is the function at this point. This is the function at this point. Those are two distinct points, right? You can't subtract them and give me the function at the, the difference between them. That's completely the wrong, wrong way to go. Right? This would be the height at x sub 0. That's that one. This is the height of x sub 0 plus h. That's, that's that one. If you find f of h, f of h is like way down here, right? H is just a little bitty point. A little bitty, sorry, uh, yeah, F of H. H is right here. That's going to be very different than anything between those. Anything ha having to do with that. You can't just subtract a function minus a function and subtract the, the input values like that. You can't do that. Okay, so there's no way we can actually simplify that part of it. Do you agree? Nothing we can do with that. However, can you come up with this, the formula for a slope right now? So we have slope is rise over run, delta y over delta x, what is our delta y in this case? f of x plus 0 plus h minus f of x sub 0. Yeah, it's hard to say, isn't it? <laughs> f of x, that's why you get a master's degree, you can say all this, they teach you all, no, that's not what they teach you. Now, f of x sub 0 plus h, sure, minus f of x plus 0, uh, f of x sub 0. So this right here is our delta y, this right here is our delta x, so right now, we actually have the formula for slope. But I need you to understand where that comes from. Are you okay where that this is in fact the rise and this is in fact the run? Are you okay with that? Do you see where it's, where it's coming from on, the, on your graph? Does that look familiar? Have you ever heard of the difference quotient before? That's the difference quotient. You might have had that in your pre-calculus class. I'm sure you had that in your pre-calculus class. They did a lot of work with that, right? Why? Because we're now going to extrapolate from that and get uh, the slope of a curve at a point. Cool? Cool.